2020, we are seeing a lot of really cool devices that are slated for release. So I thought I'd make a quick video talking about the stuff I'm most interested in and I guess why. So the big one, more folding phones, but this time, instead of these first generation ones, we're seeing these other implementations. So first we have that Razer foldable phone that's gonna be officially available for purchase at the end of January. But way more interesting to me is the idea of that Samsung clamshell foldable. So they showed the technology a couple months ago, but they're supposed to be releasing their version of a clamshell foldable phone at MWC in February. And the reason why I'm more interested in that phone than say something like the traditional Galaxy Fold is that I've played with the big fold, like the big boy $2,000 Galaxy Fold. And it's a really cool device in your hand to look at and to play with, but just functionally as a phone that you would actually use as a regular person to like fit in your pocket, that thing is huge. I don't feel like the usability is a good fit for me. I just prefer a smaller phone that unfolds into a larger screened device instead of a large phone that unfolds into an even larger device. But also that Samsung clamshell is supposed to be coming out at around an $800, $900 price point, which is way more affordable than the $2,000 big boy Galaxy Fold. And if you think about like just adoption, that sounds like it'll move the needle for adoption of foldable phones. Uh, the other thing I'm interested in is the S11. So the S10 this year was a very well-received phone, but the S11 looks stacked, like way more than I thought it would be. And it's supposed to come out in March. I'm gonna see stuff like 120 hertz screens, a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, a 108 megapixel camera, a Snapdragon 865, like this thing is gonna be loaded. However, there's supposedly no headphone jack, so I mean, we're gonna miss that. But this is why I'm interested in the S11. For the past couple of years, Samsung's camera has been better than what Apple has offered on their phones, like the iPhones. And I feel like Apple finally caught up with the iPhone 11 this year. I'm really curious to see what Samsung does, especially with that kind of hardware. Now, I don't know how I feel about the cluster of cameras that we're seeing on the back of all the renders. If those renders are accurate and the S11 does look like this, I mean, it won't be my favorite design aesthetic, but maybe I'll get used to it. I think it's just, it's become a thing. Ever since we've seen like a few big flagship phones with a group of lenses on the back, and now it's a thing. Uh, other stuff I'm interested in, cameras. So there's two kind of production cameras I'm interested in. First is that new Canon camera, the 1DX Mark III. But the big one for me, the thing that I'm like most stoked about is the new RED camera that's coming out. It's the RED Komodo, and it's like this cube body that's smaller, lighter, higher res, and cheaper than the current RED camera they shoot off of. So I'm pretty excited for that. I hope it's not crazy expensive because I really want to pick one up. Uh, and then later on in the spring, or maybe even the summer, we're gonna see new laptop GPUs from NVIDIA. So these are gonna be like the RTX Super laptop GPUs, you're not gonna see massive performance gains at the top end, but it's more important at the bottom end. Like this year alone, we saw some really great performance and like the $900 price point for gaming laptops and a bump up in performance at that price point is gonna be really nice. We should be able to see some very high performing laptops at the $800, $900 price range. Okay, the thing that I'm most interested in though, for 2020, the upcoming iPhones, like this year's iPhones were really good, but just not attractive enough to me to purchase one for personal use. So they're supposed to come out with five iPhones next year. So the first one's gonna be the iPhone SE2 or whatever they wanna call it. Uh, it's supposed to look very similar to the iPhone 6 all the way through iPhone 8, like that kind of old school look. Uh, but it's been updated with new internals and a relatively inexpensive price. And then in the fall, they're slated to release their full lineup of the four new iPhones. So iPhone 12 or 11S, whatever they end up calling it. It's supposed to be a new design with bigger screens and smaller bezels and support for 5G. It's just new hardware. And it's something I've been looking forward to, which is why I haven't purchased a new iPhone for myself in the past two years. I've been waiting for that bigger change and that's what next year offers. But that's the stuff I'm looking forward to in 2020. What about you? What are you most interested in for next year? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.